Good morning, I'm Yolanda Vasquez, and here's what people are talking about this morning. Bitter bone chilling cold. No cost on this recovery mission just yet, but a lot of the time was volunteered. Meanwhile, the final report from the NTSB could take up to one year. Federal charges aren't Lewis Williams only legal problems. The state of Maryland has also brought charges. You know, I could get used to this. Th this has turned out to be really, really fun. Last week it was Corvettes, this week convertibles. I mean, I'm turning into like some kind of automotive mama over here. <laughs> the 37 year old shot himself in the hip when the gun accidentally went off during a game between Maryland and Wake Forest. No word yet on whether Sanders will be disciplined for his actions. I probably shouldn't be skating on live TV, especially since I haven't done it in several years. In fact, I was saying the last time that I ice skated was at Rockefeller Plaza in New York City. Not wanting anyone to come into this area. Now, this is about as close as we can get, but if you look over my shoulder, you can also see there's an extended ladder and a roof that's been completely destroyed. Five people have been arrested in connection with Nicole Towns' beating. Charges range from attempted first-degree murder to child abuse. There will be a prayer vigil held on Nicole's behalf this Wednesday. Now back to you in the studio. Welcome back to NCAA on campus on Fox Sportsnet. Are you a failure if you do your best? John Wooden says no. He maintains that if you give a first rate effort, you would achieve a higher level of personal success. New venture that is truly unique, Yolanda. Well, Jeff, this is exciting. The general manager of Security Square Mall says Seoul Plaza is the first of its kind in the nation. Now, there aren't many places where you can do your traditional mall shopping and then within a stone's throw, step into a space that celebrates Asian culture. Good morning again, Yolanda. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. It's the Latino lineup. That's what we're going to have here at Orioles Park later on tonight. Hey, but listen, if you're coming out to the ballpark, you're going to want to hold on to your hat and bundle up because it is awfully windy and cold for opening day. Who'd have thunk, right? In fact, the weather has been such a problem that that concert stage that you see behind me is being dismantled as we speak. This Chesapeake Home and Design Show is exactly where you want to be. It's going on all weekend long at the Baltimore Convention Center, and there are dozens of exhibitors all hawking their wares, everything from flooring to hardware to siding to windows to garage doors you name it they've got it all here and everyone can come out and see it this afternoon starting at 12 noon up until 4 p.m. and not only is it a great thing to look at it's also very useful in terms of what the firefighters can do with this truck here to help out the Pikesville community. Yolanda. <laughs> well Jeff thanks to shows like Sex in the City more and more women are looking for ways to put a little excitement into their lives as a result a new kind of slumber party is gaining in popularity the items being sold at these all-female gatherings brings a whole new meaning to girls night out I have one question for you real quick yes powder or fruit on your funnel cake powder only don't yeah. like definitely the fruit. okay powder sure. all the way there you go Kelly that's we're, my girl we're there we're there <laughs> we're there we're there we're feeling each other but you know vendors have been here since bright and early this morning setting up for the 37th annual Fells Point Fun Festival these guys behind me bless their soul <laughs> they've been cutting and squeezing lemons since seven o'clock this morning and that's our program you can reach us anytime with comments and questions online at mpt.org tomorrow on state circle should the slots question go on the November ballot We'll have the latest plus a political roundtable. Now for all of us at MPT, I'm Yolanda Vasquez. Thanks for watching and have a wonderful night. 80 firefighters took part in this operation during the last week and a half. Their job is now complete, but the investigation into what caused the accident is far from over. The final victim from the seaport taxi accident is going home. All three bodies have now been recovered from the waters off Fort McHenry. There was uh... Uh, many roller coasters in the last 10 days, to say the least. Uh, we weathered a lot of storms. The events of March 6 are still under investigation, the boat being inspected. Uh, we don't determine fault, we determine why. And our whole purpose is to ensure safety for the future. Strong winds from a violent storm caused the taxi to capsize with 25 on board. Nearby naval reservists rushed to the scene, pulling out survivors. Two of them, Joan Pierce and her daughter Lisa, died at the hospital. The vessel's captain, Frank Deppner, survived. I'd like to express my deepest sorrow at this moment to those who have died as well as those that are missing. The recovery effort to find Corinne Schillings and her soon-to-be fiancé Andrew Rochella and six-year-old Daniel Bentram was exhausting for firefighters. This could take a very long time. In all, 10 days. Private companies helped in the search by using mini submarines, donated sonars, even high-tech classified military equipment. But in the end, it was human divers who had to check out each individual lead in the cold, murky waters. Once you're 
two foot underwater. I mean, you can kind of see the light, but it's like looking through a cup of coffee. Diving in dangerous conditions. But by the 35th time, they proudly confirm what had become a motto during the search, never leave anyone behind. No cost on this recovery mission just yet, but a lot of the time was volunteered. Meanwhile, the final report from the NTSB could take up to one year. The matter at Maryland General now so serious it's warranting a congressional hearing into questionable HIV and hepatitis C testing. If they had evidence that a test was faulty or that people were walking away from a testing site with false information, it is shocking to the conscience. I knew that that was life and death. The former lab tech who exposed troubles with the testing will be called to testify at the congressional hearing. In an interview with Eyewitness News, Kristen Turner tells us she came forward because the hospital ignored her concerns. That's the only reason that I took it in my own hands and talked to the state about it because I don't really understand why nothing was done. Turner says she contracted HIV after a horrible accident with a blood analyzer machine now under federal and state investigation. She is suing the manufacturer, the hospital and its laboratory director for 30 million dollars. Maryland General betrayed the trust of the community. Hospital officials say they can't comment on what Turner has to say because of the pending lawsuit, but they did tell Eyewitness News that they're referring the faulty blood analyzer to the FDA. This testing equipment for hepatitis C and HIV AIDS is distributed throughout the country and if not the world. And so it's of tremendous interest to the Congress and to the federal government. And Maryland General is now widening its retesting efforts. Originally only 10 to 15 percent of tests performed between June 2002 and August 2003 were in question. Now those numbers may go up. It's really scary. I wouldn't trust any result that came off of that machine. Yolanda Vasquez, WJZ Eyewitness News. More than 10,000 people now practice bee venom therapy to relieve symptoms of arthritis, lupus, and a host of other ills. For three hours a day, twice a week, Pat and Ray Wagner open up their home to administer these painful stings, and people buzz on in. It's a few minutes after 12, and like clockwork, there's already a room full of people at the Wagner home in Waldorf, Maryland. Very comfortable. They're drawn here like bees to honey, each one willing to wait their turn to get stung oh, yeah. oh, it's a good one. by the bee lady. It is just absolutely amazing what it can do. Pat Wagner is living proof of the benefits of bee venom. For years, she lived a listless life while struggling with multiple sclerosis. I couldn't sit up. I couldn't roll over. I couldn't wiggle a toe. Then in the early 90s, at the urging of her mother, Pat took a bee sting to her knee. Within 20 minutes, her lifeless legs started to warm up. They said they didn't know what to do. They never had a situation like that. I said, I'll tell you what to do. Sing the other leg, sing this arm, sing this arm, sing my head, sing me all over. Buzzing with excitement, Pat and her husband Ray set up a beehive in their own backyard. Now they're both busy as a bee, tending to the needs of people afflicted with all sorts of ailments. I remember I was crying when I called her because just the possibility of it even partially doing anything for me I was ecstatic about. Kristen Cooperstock suffers from chronic fatigue syndrome. She gets stung at least once a week and is now a firm believer in the healing effect of honeybees. I am no longer on any technical chemical medication whatsoever for the chronic fatigue at all and, and it was definitely the bee venom that made that possible. I've been Charles. Oh, I've been great. Yeah. Charles Gaskill travels 300 miles twice a week to endure the pain of bee stings to his knees, ankles, and ears. He says the steady stream of venom works wonders for his MS. I'm doing things now that I couldn't do before. So, like a miracle drug almost. It really is. It's, it's God's blessing to us. There's no charge to administer the stings, although donations are gladly accepted. Pat still gets her fair share of bee-themed knickknacks. So you, so you have another Many of which have become permanent fixtures in her home. But the real buzz behind these tiny insects is their all-natural ability to heal. Pat says they're a gift from God that should be shared with others. I get the satisfaction of knowing that they're getting relief, like I got relief, and at the very end, I get a hug and a kiss, and I love it. <laughs> I love it. You are so wonderful. 
The Wagners have their clients sign this assumption of liability, whereby they make no promises or guarantees on the effect of honeybee stings. They also have an EpiPen and Anakit nearby in case someone has an allergic reaction or goes into anaphylactic shock. Good morning, I'm Yolanda Vasquez, and here's what people are talking about this morning. Bitter bone chilling cold. Central Maryland is under a wind chill advisory this morning as temperatures plummet. Looking ahead, is there more snow in our future? Only one man knows. Tim Williams is in the first warning weather center with a look at what could be heading our way. Good morning, Tim. More snow? Breaking news out of Iraq this morning. Three U.S. soldiers are killed when a roadside bomb is detonated near Kirkuk. This latest violence comes just hours after a car bomb explodes outside a police station in Mosul, killing at least nine people and wounding as many as 45 others this morning. And just minutes ago, British Airways cancels three flights to Washington and Miami. The latest terror warning is specific to transatlantic flights. Vic Carter has the details. A critical weekend is here for the seven Democratic presidential candidates. On Tuesday, seven states will hold important primaries, including neighboring Delaware. As Mary Bubala reports, that's where frontrunner John Kerry made an appearance last night. WJZ Eyewitness News. Thanks, Mary. 269 delegates are up for grabs on Tuesday, 23 coming from Delaware. And stay with Eyewitness News for live team coverage of Campaign 2004. A Baltimore County man is at shock trauma this morning after police say his wife ran over him with her car. Investigators tell Eyewitness News it happened last night in Towson on Ridgely Oaks Road. The unidentified woman is charged with attempted murder after allegedly running over her husband twice. Investigators in Maryland and California are unfolding a murder mystery. Police discover the bodies of two men buried under concrete in San Bernardino County. Authorities in Houston say the third Super Bowl since the September 11th attacks will be as secure as the previous two. More than 25 agencies will be keeping a watchful eye on the city this weekend at a cost of well over a million dollars. A new security fence has been erected around Reliant Stadium. Metal detectors have been put in place. There will also be a no-fly zone over the stadium tomorrow. We'll be back with more, so stay tuned.